Hello friends, welcome to your own YouTube channel, Achievers Data Engineering. My name is Gyan Indra and in this video of Power BI interview questions and answer series, we are going to discuss about some practical interview questions and answers. Now there can be a number of practical interview questions and answers, but in this video, we are going to focus about handling multiple dates in Power BI report. Now, what all we are going to cover is, let's say you have a Power BI report where you want to display, you know, multiple date slicers or there is a table having multiple dates. So you may came across, you know, multiple related questions. So we are going to cover how many date slicers, how many type of date slicers are available in the Power BI report. We will also talk about how can you set the today's date as a default date in your date slicer. Now. The third one is we will discuss about how can you update all the date slicers if you are choosing or if you are updating a single one. So let's assume a situation that you have multiple date slicers across multiple pages and you want a scenario where user is changing a date slicer at one place and it should reflect the, that change on all the date slicers so that user won't have to you know set the same date range on all the pages one by one. Okay. Now, last but not the least, which is most important, how to handle multiple dates in the table with single date slicer. So let's assume you have a table having multiple date columns, but at a time on a single page, you want to display all the measures, but you can enable only a single date slicer and you want to filter all of them using that. So you may think of using use relationship DAX, but in this video, we are going to discuss about one more additional approach where you might not have to write DAX. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, guys. So now I have opened a new Power BI report. It doesn't have any data. So in my comments, many people, you know, ping me or, you know, drop a comment that where can I get this data or how can I access some data for testing purpose? So just Google it. I mean, there's n number of data sets available in the market on the Google. You can just download anything and get it started. For this particular uh, video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try a sample data set available within the Power BI desktop application. So if you have this Power BI desktop application open, just click on this try a sample data set and click on load sample data. Straight away, it will load some sample data that is available within this application. As you can see, I will just check this financials, hit load. Now the moment, the moment I hit load, it will go ahead and load some financials data some samples data that we can test upon so let's just wait for a couple of more seconds it's uh, all right it's done so let me show you the data all right here it is so um it has got some segment countries product discount band like some kind of a typical sales data so without making any further changes in this data itself i'll just go ahead and jump on the visualization page and let's talk about our first question that was how many type of date slicers are available in the power bi report so if i go ahead and select any of the date column so let's say the date and it's in the date type so i'll select one slicer and select the date so now by default you will see that a between date slicers comes on the panel right so in order to change this there's if we select this uh, you know header we can get to see multiple types of date slicer so by default is a between what does it mean like it will allow us to ch choose a range of two different dates and accordingly whatever measures or whatever data is visualized or whatever data is available on the page will be filtered now we'll come to that point but for now let's see that it's a between date slicer for another one is before honestly i haven't used this before and after as of now in my you know so far uh, experience with power bi because it doesn't look good uh, let's say if you are applying any before and after filter over here and you know so over here you can change the date but this doesn't allow you so once you will create and publish these reports you will come a number of questions okay why i'm not able to select this date and you know and you would end up saying okay this is not how it works some people do some workarounds and create some another visualization like a shape and hide this one but again it's a workaround right it doesn't work the way it should 
So um, there might be an, a number of things, but yeah, I mean, if it is available in the Power BI report, there must be some use of it. Now, another one is list. So as it says list, we can, we will get to see a list of all the dates available in the column and we can use them as a filter. Another one is a drop down, same list we available in the drop down. Then the relative date. Now this is one of the frequently used date slicer. Here we get some more functionality. So let's say I want to see last 30 days data. I can simply say last 30 and select days from here. So whatever visuals I have on the page related to these date slicers will be filtered. So I can switch between days, weeks, months, years, year calendar. This is very useful slicer and I have used it so many times. Now, similarly, there is a relative time slicer. So it works the same, but instead of days and weeks, we can switch between minutes and hours. So if you have a time sensitive visuals, which are kind of updating, uh, kind of a live and you want to you know show the data based on a couple of last few minutes or hours then definitely you can use this one so i hope it, it is helping you to understand how many type of date slicers are available in the power bi report now let's jump on our different question the other question that says how to set the today's date as a default date in the slicer Actually, before we proceed further and talk about this question and talk about other two questions as well, let's first spend some time on understanding the data. So as I showed you, I just downloaded this data, the sample data set available within the Power BI desktop application. Now, just to save some time, I have made some modification in this data. So by default, when you will download it, it might contain some, you know, past dates. However, just to make it more interactive and practical use case, I have updated its date to match the current year's date. So you might notice the actual date I have renamed as order date. And on top of that, for order date, I have updated all the dates to, you know, year 2022. For days, I have, you know, made them for actually months, I have made them between 1 to 12. And for date, I have made them ran between 1 to 30. So you might notice date will keep on changing, but it's just a way to create some dummy data for current year and in a, in a current timestamp. Now, similarly, I have created a sales ID just in an index column. Also, I have created these three date columns. So one is the ship date. So for example, someone ordered a particular item. So let's say these kind of uh, units were ordered. Now they might be uh, shipped after a couple of days. So what I have done, let's say I have created a ship date, which is order date plus two date. So after two days of ordering these particular item, these will be shipped. Now, once they are shipped, um, you know, we will generate an invoice after 15 days to the customer. And once invoice is generated, we might receive payment within one days or maybe within next 15 days. So this is how this payment receive date a column is created right now think of a scenario that you want to display a couple of measures related to this particular report or re related to this particular table however as you can see here i mean it's a very bad example right now you might uh, you might be seeing but think of a scenario you you want to display a couple of measures let's say total unit shipped total sales total discount total profit and total amount of invoice raised they all might be related to some different dates altogether in the same table but at a time uh, to make your report look good you should be using only one date slicer right now the first thing to avoid this what i have done is i have created a date table now to answer the first question the second question that says how to set the today's date as a default date in the date slicer what i have done is i have created this date table and the date table, I have uh, not used the calendar auto function. Instead, I have used a uh, calendar function that in which I have mentioned the minimum date as a minimum date in the order date. And the maximum date is nothing but the today's date. Now, again, think of a scenario. scenario. Let's say your order date isn't updating on daily basis. Let's say, or uh, let's say there was no sales from last four days. So if your end user is, you know, selecting this particular, uh, you know, two uh, date, he might not see uh, today's date or he might not see last four days date. So 
if we are not having today's date as a by default date, then you might get some questions. Why I don't see today's date? Is Power BI not working properly or why data is not getting refreshed in the background? He might not know that there were no sales from last four days, right? So to avoid that scenario, what I have done, this, this date table will take care of it, whether there is a sales date available for yesterday, day before yesterday or not. It will anyhow create a date table with today's date and this date slicer is created based on that date table. So every time we will open this report on daily basis, this to date will always contain today's date, right? We can like by default selected 19, I just selected it 15. So it will always contain today's date. And when we will open this report on the next day, it will by default go to the 20. Right now we won't be able to select it because it's a future date. All right, so I hope it answers your second questions. All right, now let's skip the third question for now and let's move to the fourth question directly. And the answer of third question you will get in between. So now in the current scenario, as I just explained you, we have one date slicer available and all these measures are you know, plotted from the same table, but they are calculated based on different dates. Now, because we have only one date slicer, we should be using use relationship DAX, which is pretty common and you might already know it. But uh, just for the sake of example, I'll just show you. So for example, this particular measure, which says uh, unit shipped. So I have created a measure that says calculate distinct count of units sold. And I'm using a relationship that says date table and the ship date. So if I go here in the, like in the model view, this date table is connected with the order date by default. However, I have an inactive relationship with invoice date similarly with ship date and with payment received date. So now if I want the payment received date or order, you know, order or the invoice date related amount to be filtered based on this date, I should be using use relationship DAX that what I have done here, right? Similarly, in case of, let's say, I would say total amount raise. If I select this measure, I have again used the use relationship DAX. And uh, I'm saying that, okay, try use this date filter and filter the invoice date as well. So if I change this particular date slicer, everything will update. And uh, in, in the background, this date slicer is filtering the invoice date as well. And those results are properly like, uh, you know, parallelly calculated and displayed over here. Now think of a scenario that Right now, I'm able to create a, at least an inactive relationship, but there might be some situation where you want to you know, pick some data from another table and you won't be able to create a relationship using date, date table, right? There, there are some scenarios where you have a number of tables and things are really getting complicated. And if you are creating at least an inactive relationship with a table, it might hamper the existing relationship that would be there, right? So these kind of scenarios might come across in the practical Power BI world. Now to avoid that, there's one more thing that you can try. So let's check it out that. So this feature uh, on this particular page, what I have done, I have populated all these measures without the DAX. So I have just selected the actual column itself. So it says the total sales, the total discount. It's not the measure, it's the actual column. Again, the total profit, invoice amount raised. Now the these three are these three can be calculated directly by the order date so if i will use this date slicer which is connected with the order date by default these three will return the correct result however in case of invoice raised and units sold they might be different right because on a particular order date whatever the order was placed, there might be a different invoice raised. So right now you will see the sum of sales and invoice raised are the same. This is not the true representation, right? And to calculate this one, we are not using use relationship DAX as of now, correct? Now to avoid that, what we can do is, I'll just create, a, let's say, copy of this uh, slicer. Okay, so this one is directly, you know, uh, based on uh, the order date slicer. 
what I will do in this one is instead of selecting the default date, I will you know select the ship date. So let's say I'll select the ship date. I'll create one more copy of date slicer. And in this one, I, instead of selecting the ship date or order date, I will select the invoice date. Okay. Now what I want is this date slicer should filter only the invoice raised, not the other one. So I can go into the format, edit interactions, select this particular date slicer and I'll disable the filtering for rest of the you know, measures. Only this one should filter. Similarly with this, uh, which we chosen as a ship date, I'll say select only this one, like filter only this one and do not filter other than that. So I'll just disable all of them. Now for this one, these three needs to be filtered, but not these two. Okay. Now this is how we configured it. Now answering to the third question, how can we, you know, keep them in the sync? So I can simply go on to the view, select, uh, select sync slicers, select one of them, go into the advanced option and let's uh, give a name. I'll say, let's say date slicer group. Okay. Now just copy the same name. I'll go into this particular slicer, paste it here. Now, once you do that, just uncheck this one because if you'll keep on checking this one, then it will update all these three slicers to take value from the same column, but we don't want that. So we want to continue using the different fields. So I'll just uncheck this one. I'll go into this one again, paste that and uncheck the first column. Now all three slicers are talking to each other and they will be in sync. So for example, if I change something in the first slicer, it will update on the other one as well. Okay. Now at the end, what we can do is I can simply select these two slicers, go into the view, select the selection, expand it, and we can hide these two slicers. Okay. So we have not set up any DAX. We are directly using the column names. We are direct, directly using the columns containing the actual values. Okay. Now there is a only single date slicer. I can just change it. And in the background, it is updating those two slicers as well, which are hidden in the view and it will update those values. So now you would notice invoice raised amount and sum of sales amount is different because this is how it is calculating in the background. So having these slicers in the sync, we can, you know, uh, use this functionality across multiple pages. So for example, if I unhide it just for a second and let's say I create a copy and let's say I want to create one more page. So by default, if I go ahead and uh, let's say copy it from here and go on another page and paste it. Okay. Well, it's not pasting. I'll just select it like this. Come on copy copy visual go here really paste okay here it is so by default it asks us whether we want to sync or not if even if we click on don't sync but still we can go ahead and update the sync slicer and if i let's say change the value over here if i have expanded it for full if i go back on that page if i like let's say change it here and go back here Okay, let me just, uh, I just clicked on don't sing, maybe that's why. So I'll just copy this one again, go here and yep, just select this one. Now, if I change anything over here, come back to that and these filters will be again in the sync. Notice it's kind of getting updated. Similarly like this one and this one, yep, it's updated. So I hope it has answered all these four questions to you and you have got a good understanding. How can you handle multiple dates if you are having multiple dates in a single table and you want to display only one date slicer in the report? All right. I hope you like the content. If you like the content, please hit the like button and do subscribe to my YouTube channel to stay up to date on any latest video that I upload. Thank you for watching. Keep learning. Have a great day.